The aim of this part of the lab is to explore the incidence of Fibrio parahemolyticus in shrimps. We will analyse shrimp using a variety of microbiological techniques to aid the identification of microorganisms present in these samples. You are provided with a sample of whole shrimp or shrimp tails weighing approximately 20 grams, in addition to a sample of pre-blended shrimp. These will be referred to as sample A and sample B respectively, with sample B acting as the control. Firstly, 180 ml of phosphate buffered saline is added to sample A. This is then transferred to a blender and blended for five minutes. Please note that sample B has been prepared in exactly the same way. This blended mixture represents the 10 to the minus one dilution as 20 grams of shrimp has been blended in 180 ml of saline. Next, you will perform three serial tenfold dilutions for sample A. To do this, add nine ml of PBS to three universals. These should be labeled 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus three, and 10 to the minus four. Remember to use ASET technique throughout. Repeat this process for sample B. You will now transfer your blended sample A mixture to a beaker and allow this to settle on the bench for two minutes. Carefully transfer one mil of the blended shrimp mixture to the universal labeled 10 to the minus two, ensuring you avoid the foam at the top of the beaker. Mix the sample thoroughly by vortexing. This sample represents your minus two dilution and is used to prepare your minus three dilution using the same method as previously employed. Repeat this process for the 10 to the minus 4 dilution. Don't forget to vortex this sample. Repeat this process using sample B. By the end of this, you should have three universals for sample A and sample B. You should be able to see the visual differences between each of the dilutions.
Now you will play 0 0.1 mils of your 10 to the minus 1 sample A onto the centre of a triptone soy agar plate. Carefully spread the drop across the agar as evenly as possible, using the entire surface of the plate. Remember to not rush this step. Try and keep the lid over the plate as much as possible to prevent contamination. Once dry, invert the plate. Repeat these steps for the other sample A dilutions, remembering to vortex before removing 0.1 mils from each sample. Repeat the above steps for sample A, but this time you should plate or biosulfate citrate biosalts sucrose agar also known as TCBSA. This agar is used to isolate vibrio species and is highly selective for vibrio cholerae and vibrio parahemolyticus. Prepare spread plates in the same way for sample B dilutions. Plates are then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. The next day, you should inspect your plates and count the number of colonies on each plate. Remember to only count plates that contain between 30 and 300 colonies. Designate plates fewer than 30 colonies as too few to count and plates with more than 300 colonies as too numerous to count. For TSA, you should count the total number of colonies. For the TCBSA plates, you should count the blue-green colonies only, as these represent Vibrio parahemolyticus. Taking into account the dilution factors, calculate the total number of bacteria and the total number of Vibrio parahemolyticus per gram of shrimp for samples A and B.